This, uh, this might be pretty exciting because this is like an industrial grade high speed 3D printer from King Rune and it's the it's the KLP1 and we've got it here and we're reviewing it but we're going to take a look and I'm going to show you a feature that just might outperform everybody else's so it's, it's going to be interesting. Oh yeah. Let's get into it. I brought the little King Rune over here because I wanted you to see this. Uh, this is pretty obvious. It's, it's linear rail bearings, linear rail bearings. And that makes this machine industrial grade because it's on ball bearings. There are small uh, enclosures to run on these steel rails. And if you keep them greased up or lubed up a little bit, this thing should just outlast anything in its class as opposed to those little rubber wheels. But I also think this is, uh, in the long term, this could be the answer because uh, even when you're on the uh, new high-speed printers, a lot of them are, are using you know metal tubes or uh, carbon fiber tubes, that sort of thing. And there's, there's a certain wear factor. You're sort of dragging things back and forth. And at high speed, it's like it's going to wear down even faster. So I'm not sure how long a high-speed printer will last. So the very first thing about a high-speed printer was if it had linear rail bearings like this, it would probably outlast anybody else's. So I just wanted to show you that before we... We're going to get into the numbers and all the rest of it with this. This is uh, this is King Rune's uh, new high-speed printer. Yeah, and it looks really good. Yeah. So once you get this out of the box, you've got the four uh, plates or pieces to put on to assemble with some screws. Real easy, no-brainer. And there's some small screws, all marked with little red arrows. I've left the the on so I can show them to you later. Uh, that you have to take the screws out from shipping. There's just a few, so not a big deal. But when I uh, looked inside the machine and immediately saw these linear rail bearings used for the high-speed printer machine from King Rune, yeah, that's impressive. The next thing I noticed too was I read up immediately was all metal hot end, good. PEI sheet, good. Uh, size 210 by 210 by 210 is the build size. Again, pretty decent size for a fully enclosed machine, which allows you, of course, to run PLA, PLA Plus, PET G, TPU, ABS, and an ASA as well, which wasn't on the list, but it's there. I know you're all waiting for that, but it runs on Clipper. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yay. I guess while we're running a test bench here off, I'll just mention the King Rune has been around since 2015, and they're based on Shenzhen and Hong Kong. Uh, King Rune has, they've gathered quite a large group of people together that want to make and manufacture 3D printers and 3D printer parts. Uh, they've been trying to provide, you know, excellent service worldwide for 3D printing, and so they want your confidence in there, which is cool. You know, I, I understand that. Uh, the other thing I didn't mention was this one here has a 300 watt power supply, so it doesn't eat a lot of power compared to some printers. It's pretty efficient that way. And because of the uh, clipper install, of course, there's no Raspberry Pi required, which is a pretty good. You know, a lot of people are really, you know, hot for that feature. But also the all metal hot end with ceramic heating core. Uh, enables a wide range of materials, which again, you know, I've mentioned the material thing, but yeah, you know, it, that, that's one of the first things I really look for, and I'm really happy to say King Rin managed to put that on this high speed printer. Uh, okay, I guess the next big simple question on any high speed printer the bench you can be made in about 17 to 18 minutes. Uh, this is actually PET G, which I'm running. Again, that's, you know, something I normally would not attempt with a high speed printer to just try out, but. Uh, King Rune was nice enough, they sent me four rolls, four rolls, yeah, of, of Pet G. So we can make lots of benches or whatever. We, we tried some other things already, and that was one of the, uh, you'll notice this on the, here on the plate. It's, that was an error. I'm still trying to clean that off of there. Yeah, it's quite a mess. No. Yeah, the, uh, this was something that rafted, and I didn't want to raft. Well, let's talk about the other big numbers here. 500 millimeters uh, a second squared which is pretty much, that's a high-speed printer. Uh, also, acceleration is 10,000 millimeters squared, which is, again, you know, a fast, high-speed machine. The thing here right now is, I shouldn't even mention this just yet, but I need to, is, is the price. It's, it's, for the size of the printer, the features, 
it's a low price. And King Rune has always uh, sort of shone on me that way with their uh, lower prices because they do have good deals. And we have a good deal on this right now. Also, uh, I'm gonna just mention it, uh, that Pet G that King Rune sent over to me is, yeah, on sale this month. I think they have like a Black Friday sale or something going on with it where you can get like four spools for like 70 something dollars or something. It's a really good price. Now, let's talk about, uh, we, we did mention the 300 watt power supply. Let's talk about some other numbers here. Correction, 20,000 millimeters a second acceleration speed. Yeah, this, uh, for some reason I got two different numbers on there. I don't know why that is, but uh, I'll post all these specs. We'll just scroll through there and I'll put them up on the screen right now. And that way uh, you can, you can, you can pause anytime you want, and then you can just look at the specification if there's something specific that you want to ask about. Now, we're going to talk about the software. There's a couple things here that uh, I would like to talk about, I guess. And the, the slicer they are using, they say to use, is Orca, Orca Slicer. And it does work, so, like, okay, it's Orca. I like Prusa, and I like Cura mostly. Uh, I like Bamboo Labs for that matter, but uh, the Orca Slicer I do not like. I've never liked Orca Slicer, so that doesn't get along with me real well, but it works fine. So it, you know, you can load your print, your STL file into the Orca Slicer, set it up for this, and run it. Okay. Uh, one problem I've had with the Orca Slicer so far, in fact, it seems to be happening quite often. This is not the home location when it's finished. And for some reason, it's not going to the home location, so I may have to do a, you know, a software update or something. Software is the only problem uh, so far that I've been seeing. It's just, it's a weakness with a lot of the machines have various software issues, and this one here is kind of a, yeah, classic. But the, the build is great. It's all metal. It's a good machine. Uh, I just wish they had gone with uh, Prusa Slicer cura or something something simple straightforward that you can just bring right in now they do include i'll see if i can find it right here there it is they do include this usb and it has a uh, execute file for uh cura and also for prusa on it but it's windows uh application uh, you can open it up on the mac but i had a problem with the apple it it opened up the prusa but it tried to see two different printers at the same time which made it crash so that sort of didn't work. Like I said, software is third party. It's not King Rune. It's, it's just, you know, it's just software glitches. The input output on the side here is pretty amazing. We've got two USB uh, ports back here, plus a USB 3.0 high speed one, and also a Cat 5 or 6 uh, outlet plug. And also, of course, you know, the usual switch in the cord on the back here. The uh, filament is, you know, back here, kept on a little spool or feeds. The filament feeder or spool feeder back here is actually probably one of the best ones I've seen for the for the being on the back. It it does it does seem to do the trick. I'm kind of like you know what it it works you know. So anyways uh, had to have that little talk I guess. Yeah it's just one of those things that uh, I always look at these companies and always wonder why don't they do their own in-house or make sure that Cura and everybody is up to date with the latest software to run, you know, these machines. And they just, I don't know, it just, it's open source. Why doesn't it happen that way? So the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna look at, I'm gonna show you something that, one of the reasons why I've got 10 3D printers, why would I walk over and use this one? A couple of uh, things when you're gonna make something like this part here, on a bed slinger, this thing takes eight hours on a bed slinger. Yeah, I've got 10 machines here, and that's, you know, with PLA. This is made with the new Pet G that uh, King Rune sent over to me, and it made this in two hours. Yeah, so if I want to make a part, obviously time is always something that we should all be, you know, aware of. Rather than leave a machine running for eight hours, you know, to see if the print's going to work or not, uh, within two hours or, depending on what it is, less, I can have it out of something like this. So yeah, that's a big gainer. Also, the power supply on this is not very high. It's only 300 watt. The machine said to only run, what, 240 watts. So uh, my other machines, some of them are 450, 500 watt machines, and they're running eight hours to get the same job done. So I'm even saving electricity and time 
<laughs> which is money yeah, if I run with a high-speed printer. So it's another reason to look at a high-speed printer. And once we've had a couple of these in here, I know that it's like the other, the bed slinger stuff is like, get it out of here. It's obsolete. You know, who wants that? But I do like that one little king rune I showed you the, at the beginning of the show because I have run Pet G on that thing and flawless over and over and over again. But I do run uh, king rune Pet G on that machine uh, specifically because I... I am not a big Pet G fan. I've had a lot of trouble with Pet G over time, and I've run, tried different bed temperatures, different nozzle temperatures, even slowed the speed down, the retraction numbers, everything, and it's like I have problems. The little king room, for some reason, just runs it with defaults and no problem, and it's like, wow, how does that happen? You know, <laughs> definitely a big savings in time and money because of the electric power even being used in only two hours, we have the part we need. Did you notice this little pen on the door? Yeah, this is the next thing we need to talk about. This came in with the supplies with when you order the machine, and I was looking at this little nylon type pen thing, and I was like, what the, why would they include, what's that for? Uh, we're gonna talk about the interface, which is right here, and I'm gonna have to close up so I really see what's going on, but you're gonna need this pen because it's like a little mini tablet with tiny icons, and you need the pen in order to, you know, touch and touch screen and work the screen. Yeah, so the pen does a terrific job. So, hey, no complaints. All right, there we go. So when we fire up, uh, we're gonna be presented with this really small screen and you've got this little nylon pen that they include. And you can see why, because look at the size of the pen. You know, you, you could try hitting these crazy buttons with your fingers, but I think we'd have fat finger problems. And first thing we're gonna do is gonna go to homing and just home all. We've already run the uh, thing, but I want you to see this. It, if you listen for a few seconds, there, there it goes. Now it's starting to actually home. This, the reaction time is kind of sluggish. Uh, so when you hit something, you have to sort of wait on it a little bit. Now, I've also got voice isolation on because I've got a big fan running with the machine on. So it's kind of noisy right now with the door open. Now I'll go back to where we want to actually print something. And again, you can see I hit that there, finally. Yep, now it's homing again, and it's also getting ready to print. So now we're gonna hit the print numbers, and you're gonna be presented with this page, and you've got Benchy Fast, Benchy Standard, and Benchy Violent. Yeah, and when they say violent, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not kidding, you know. Now let's just start Benchy uh, Fast, for example, and what's gonna happen here is I've got Pet G loaded, and it's gonna think it's PLA for some reason, so when I do this, and, I, and you get this, and it shows what you're going to print, which is really cool in the G code. So then you say print, but the problem is the if you look at these numbers for PET G, this is wrong. So uh, I'm going to go over here and just touch it with the pen and pull it up. And I'm going to look at heat, the bed heat. I want the bed heat 10 degrees, so I hit the positive here. And whoop, there we go. See, we can get this. Okay, we'll punch in 70 and check it off and say, okay, we want 70. And same with the extruder. I'm going to pull the extruder up and see if we can get, uh, let's see, 240. Oops. Uh, take that out and try again. Yeah, it's a little off. I'm on an angle here with you, so I'm, <coughs> you know, excuse me there. There we go. And there's 240, and then close it. Now we've got the correct settings for the print that we want with PET G. Uh, <coughs> I put PET G profile in here and with the software, and it just, it just keeps thinking it's PLA. And the awkward problem is these are these are programs that are come with the machine when you buy the uh, KLP1. So it's already preset to PLA automatically. So it's just a small, you know, not a big deal, but just something you have to be aware of. And then we can go back here and we can watch our information as the print bed uh, is coming up. And of course, then we'll have the uh, nozzle shoot up pretty high. The nozzle heats up fast. The bed is slow unless you close the doors, which I have the doors open right now. And again, it shows you the model that you're printing. Uh, you also have, of course, cancel and pause. And uh, you can do, go to fine tuning and other settings. So it's, you know, the interface is pretty cool, but it takes a while to get used to this because it's different. And it, it is really. I'm going to have to say it actually is a pretty cool interface, really, uh, compared to other machines. So uh, King Room came up with something a little different here. But we do, we do uh, want to talk about software. <clears throat> yeah. 
Okay, if you're wondering where we just were, this here's the screen we were looking at just now. This is the interface. It's really small, it's really tiny, but it has, you know, it has really good little icons. And like I said, all the control, more than all the control you should need is on that interface. It just seems a little sluggish to me, but it's still a pretty interesting situation because between the price and the features, you've really got, King Rune has always done this. They really give you a lot of machine for your price. And you know, industrial grade, you know, at this point. So it's, it, it's they've always been uh, sort of lean this way. But like I said, I'm going to talk about the software. I'll probably, I may or may not get jumped over the software thing, but uh, we've been trying to run uh, Cura to work with this. And King Room includes the files on the USB stick for the Cura that you need in order to update your Cura to work with the KLP1. And what happened, I don't know, but I uh, spent four hours with it and I was unable to get the uh, Cura to update to where it would allow me to run the KL, the KL, the KLP1. And that was kind of frustrating, but uh, I do know that someplace, at some point, software is funny, it'll get updated and it'll work fine at some point in the future. So it's, a, it's just a thing right now. Uh, the other one I tried to work with uh, was they also have Prusa in there. So I went ahead to try to use the Prusa and I couldn't get it. Uh, it just, uh, same thing, it was glitched, uh, glitched up. Now I'm running Mac OS, so that, you know, that creates a problem too because a lot of their stuff was in Windows files with the execute for Windows and I don't use Windows. So uh, using the Mac OS stuff that they supplied was like, okay, good, you know, and then it was like, okay, I can't get it working. So I don't know what's wrong or what's happening. I did go through the directories really carefully and look through the files to see if I could detect, you know, where it was glitching because it's probably just a sm minor glitch somewhere that something uh, something got missed, but I was unable to get it to work. The other good thing here with this one is, and I've seen the other ones, when you get a little bit of, uh, I guess we'll call it poop or whatever coming down from above from work, uh, it collects here, but it's a flat plate all the way to the front, so you can just sort of sweep your stuff out so you don't have any problem with any buildup under here. Uh, some of the other machines whose names uh, we will not mention, uh, there's a ridge here with a front and stuff, and the stuff has a tendency to get caught up underneath the machine instead of able, you know, being able to just clean the machine out. So, you know, that's a good thing. Because it's a high-speed machine, uh, I was making these brackets. We've only had the machine a couple of days, and I had a project coming up that called for some support brackets for a wooden table project. And so we got these uh, support brackets, but because it's a high speed machine, I was able to make lots of them really quickly, <laughs> which, which is, you know, I really like that. And these are nice and strong for a small wooden table or anything like that. Rather than running, uh, you know, wooden supports and stuff in there, it was like, I'll just print something. And these work great. They give the table enough strength that, you know, it'll be sturdy. I actually uh, got carried away and uh, because of the high speed I made too many, <laughs> so that is a good project right there. Out of the Pet G, yeah, from King Rune. Uh, they, Pet G uh, seems to be really good quality, so I, I gotta give them that. Uh, I am gonna show you a problem here. You probably saw this. This is on the lid, and I'm gonna turn the machine so you can see what's going on here. The lid is a good idea. I'll just take this off for a second, because when you're not using the machine, you close the lid and keep the dust out, which is great. Uh, but when you want to run the machine, you want to leave the lid open for the heat and stuff to get out of there. If you pull the lid all the way back, it sits and drags here on the spool. And you don't want this spool dragging into your lid. So what I did was I just got one of these cheap little 98 cent uh, brackets, uh, we call them squeeze, squeeze clamps on here. And that way it just sort of holds the lid up in the middle, just keeps it out of the way whenever I'm running it. Other really interesting but nice feature too is uh, we've got like I said, USB 3.0, plus we have the two regular USBs and the Cat5. I'd mentioned that, but I didn't show them to you. They're on the side of the machine too, which is good because it's, it, you know, it's out of the way. And this is where all, all your files can be saved on the USB and fed to the machine. I guess I showed you three sides. I may as well show you the fourth side, the back of the machine, of course. And here's our filament runout, and this is our feeder tube. Now, the feeder tube is loose this way, which kind of works for you because sometimes when you're trying to extract the uh, and change color or something you can get a hold of the tube and pull here or something if you need to pull it back or something like that when you're helping to you know clean up the machine uh, otherwise normally it'll just sit like that 
And with the filament runner, it also has, of course, power loss. So, you know, you can restore and go back to work. This is, let me get this off of here. There's a little bracket here with two sides, two edges here. So when your filament's sitting up here on it like this, it actually rides and, and glides pretty good. So like I said, it's, this kind of surprised me. I didn't think much of it, but when I got it on and started using it, I'm like, you know what, it, it, it works well. So, you know, kangaroo, yeah, you did a good job with that actually, that's fine. You see too, another great thing about having a high speed printer is you can make benchy, 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 benchy. <laughs> yeah, all the benches you want. Uh, these are the high speed benches right here, especially this one here on this end was the, the uh, violent as they called it. And it didn't come out perfect, which I didn't expect it to. It's 17 minutes. There's no way you're going to make a really perfect benchy, but it still, it's, it came out pretty darn good. So the machine shows lots of good promise. And I know for a fact those darn linear rail bearings in there are going to, you know, really help to keep the machine precise for a very long time. I guess the next feature we need to talk about is it has auto bed leveling and you set it through its paces so it does this, uh, it takes the readings off the bed and then you offset the z-axis that is the gap to make sure you got that uh, paper thick <laughs> gap between your nozzle and your bed so you probably bring your nozzle down a little bit tight to where it pinches paper or something in order to finalize the deal but with the auto bed leveling you're all set wow so links will be in the description below but also uh, we need to talk about who's this machine for <laughs> and here's my thoughts on that uh, first off we're going to start at the very bottom of the beginner. If you're new to 3D printing and you've never had one, this one is going to be a little bit challenging for you. Uh, but if you have a friend that's into 3D printing and or you're a computer geek, so you can deal with directories and files and things like that a little bit, you might be okay with it too. Uh, intermediates and that will love the machine. Anyone advanced will say, oh, phew, I can see the potentials here. And also, uh, if you have a printer farm and you're worried about having downtime with other machines a high speed like this with those linear rail bearings and what have you sort of industrial grade this would not be a bad like uh, i guess we'll call it the backup machine you know if you don't want to have this as a main event but you could have it as a backup and because it runs clipper it doesn't need uh you know raspberry pi or anything you can send files directly over from the computer also there's a phone app i should mention that too but uh, you can send files directly from the computer and you know tell hey this is a calls for this print get printing it is only a single color of course per you know use uh, beyond that uh, for the price you get what you pay for and I would say King Rune did what they always seem to do they seem to give you a really good reliable machine you know for a great price so it's like I can't criticize that at all so anyways we're gonna end this and just say yeah you know please check that link out also don't forget to come back and take a look because sometimes uh, we have a discount code, you know, a couple days later, a week later, whatever. Sometimes we'll throw it in there later uh, if there's anything comes up, you know, or sale price, something like that. We'll, we'll throw it into the link too. So always good to check back with me just in case something like that shows up. In the meantime, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell, and I'm out of here. Over and out.